Maybe it really is all in your head. In this video, we'll discuss how our brain regulates what we eat and how much. And we'll explore how some of these neurological pathways can go awry in the disease of obesity. Now, we've talked about and we know in other videos, we've explained how there's so many hormones released by your gut and your adipose tissue that communicate with many different areas of the brain to regulate appetite and food intake. But to keep things simple today, I'm gonna to focus on three main areas of your brain that regulate food intake. The first one we'll talk about is the homeostatic system, which is the hypothalamus, and it responds to signals from your external environment and your gut hormones to regulate hunger, energy balance, and metabolism subconsciously. Homeostatic eating is when you eat in response to your brain's perceived need for energy in order to function and survive. Now, this is in contrast to the hedonic system, which is the mesolimbic system above the brainstem and underneath the cerebral cortex. And it is associated with the liking and wanting of food and the reward from eating certain highly palatable and delicious foods. In contrast to homeostatic eating, hedonic eating is the drive to eat in order to obtain pleasure in the absence of an energy deficit or a need for calories in order to survive. Nerves in this area of the brain release dopamine, which is that feel-good hormone associated with pleasure and satisfaction. Certain drugs cause a rush of dopamine, as does exercise, shopping, and eating delicious foods. When we eat sugar, for example, dopamine receptors in the mesolimbic system get activated and we feel pleasure. And this is actually similar to the way the brain responds to substances like cocaine and heroin. And while sugar addiction is still a concept that's being debated, lab rats, when given the option, will actually choose sweets over cocaine and nicotine. Now, interestingly enough, dopamine receptors in patients suffering from obesity have a lower concentration compared to those living in leaner bodies. So this basically means that patients with obesity would have to consume way more of a pleasurable substance to get the same response as those in leaner bodies. The third important brain region that we'll talk about is the prefrontal cortex. Its role is executive function and impulse control. And in patients with higher body mass index or BMI, there seems to be an impairment in cortical decision-making function when considering short-term reward versus long-term consequences of food intake. For example, adult men and women suffering from obesity have decreased activation of the left dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex in response to food stimuli and meal consumption, which is thought to be linked with less impulse control. In terms of the right prefrontal cortex, when this area of the brain suffers damage or injury, patients can actually develop a disorder called Gourmand syndrome. This is associated with extreme passion for gourmet foods, with obsessive thinking about, talking about, and consuming fine foods. So this example really highlights how the structure and chemical functioning of our brain can impact how we view food and eat food. And really all of these examples illustrate how what we eat is so much more complicated than just hunger and calories. There are countless intricate pathways in our brains that talk to each other and influence our drive to consume certain foods. And understanding this biology allows us to tailor behavioral modification techniques to help our patients instead of just relying on willpower, which we know does not work. More useful approaches include cognitive behavioral therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy, and motivational interviewing. And I look forward to exploring them with you to help take back control of your brain and your relationship with food.